friends. Hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello. Hi. Uh, today's candle of the day is Champagne Wasted, one of my favorite candles from the Forever Mood line. You can actually get the candles at Sephora now, which is amazing. I think they only have the original collection and the fall collection, if I'm not mistaken, but I hope they expand soon because I want that new butterfly collection. I literally need it. Um, hi! So today's video, we are doing another installment of a new series that I want to do on my channel called Internet History. I did one recently on the Tanacon disaster, and I knew that the second one I wanted to do was going to be centered around, I think, something that, not to be dramatic, but something that legitimately kind of changed the makeup YouTube community and changed the way that influencers interact with each other. It changed the way that influencers responded to controversy. Um, and that is Dramageddon 1. Dramageddon 1 at the time in 2018 was not called Dramageddon 1. It was just Dramageddon because it was the first of its kind. And it was the first time that something of this magnitude had happened. Before Dramageddon 1, there had been influencers getting into scandals and drama channels covering those scandals and things like that. However, there had never been this many influencers <laughs> involved in scandals with each other, along with being generally problematic ever. Like something to this magnitude had never happened before and we really got to see a sort of behind the scenes look into how influencer culture had turned incredibly toxic. It was definitely a pivotal point in the makeup YouTube community. I think it's super interesting all these years later, we're coming up on almost the three year mark of the first Dramageddon and I feel like so much has happened since then. Um, so I think it'd be fun to just revisit it and talk about it now. Before we jump into the video, today's video is sponsored by Audible. Hi friends, editing me here, and today's video we have a sponsor. Uh, Audible is sponsoring today's video, and I am so excited. I love, love, love Audible. I use them all of the time. They're the leading provider of spoken word entertainment that is all in one place. Using Audible has been a great way to distract anytime I'm having any sort of anxiety like in the car or if I'm trying to work. Nothing calms me down more than a very good audiobook and Audible is the perfect place to get them. A perfect example of this is Charles and I were recently on a pretty long road trip. It was about four and a half hours and we really wanted to kill some time. So together we have been listening to A Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. It is like a 40 hour long book and we are on hour 16. So every road trip we take together, we just try to work our way through the hours and hours of content and it makes the time fly by. How Audible works is you pay the subscription service and every month you get one credit that you can use for anything. You can get a best selling book, you can get a new release, you can get a celebrity memoir. And on top of that, you also have access to the Audible Plus catalog. And to me, this is what makes the membership worth the price point is just how many options you have. You have access to tons and tons of books, podcasts, comedy specials, wellness programs, like just thousands of titles to pull from that really leads to endless entertainment. If you're interested in trying Audible, you can visit audible.com slash smoky glow or text smoky glow to 500 500. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video and for making all of my very long car rides seem shorter. And let's jump into the video. Now, I think if you asked a lot of people about Dramageddon 1, they would point to this tweet and they would say, this is the tweet that started it all. Like this is the tweet that kicked everything off. And while I don't disagree that this tweet was sort of a catalyst in Dramageddon 1 for everything that happened, I also think that Dramageddon 1 started years prior to this tweet. By the way, sidebar, uh, don't take a shot every time I say Dramageddon. <laughs> please. I truly think if you want to get to sort of the root of Dramageddon 1 and how it all started, you almost have to go back to like 2016. Because that's when Manny MUA and Jeffree Star did one of their first ever on-camera collabs and started a very public friendship with each other. Now at this point, both Manny and Jeffree Star had pretty decent sized followings, but they definitely had different reputations in the beauty community. The videos that they posted together and the collaborations they did often got millions and millions of views and people got really invested in their 
friendship. Now, as the two started to sort of merge fan bases a little bit, Manny definitely got called out a lot more than Jeffrey. I think there was a few reasons for this. I think number one, Manny was kind of seen and branded as a social climber. So he had been previously friends with some with people like Patrick Starr, and it seemed like he just kind of left people in the dust to continue to grow to bigger creators who could offer him more. I also think Manny was definitely called out for the sort of I don't know how to better say this other than like ass kissing behavior. Like Jeffrey would say something and then Manny would immediately repeat it back to him. And people caught on to that and made a lot of jokes about it. I don't think that was anything people hated Manny for. I think it was just an observation that people kind of pointed out was that it kind of seemed like he was all over Jeffrey and just mimicked the opinion that he had. Now, I think the other reason that Manny was often painted as fake or, you know, social climbing was because I think that his personality on YouTube at that point in time had definitely sort of derailed from being a lot more relatable. He started his channel working at makeup stores and just kind of talking about makeup in a very general sense. And as he grew, there was definitely a little bit of a personality shift that in recent years, Manny himself has owned up to. Whereas Jeffrey, even though he was incredibly problematic, was seen as more real and authentic because it didn't really seem like he was putting on an act. It seemed like this is just who he was, whereas people felt like Manny was putting on this show. Now, I would just like to pause here and say, I have had the chance to interview Manny on my channel. I can link that video down below. And he talks a lot about 2018 and everything that went down with this whole scandal from his perspective. And honestly, during that interview, one of, I think, the best points I felt that he brought up that I think hadn't really been considered by me at all before was just the fact that a lot of people branded him as a social climber, but I think that it's disingenuous to say both parts parties, especially him and Jeffree Star, weren't mutually gaining from those collaborations and from their public friendship. At the time of this friendship, it was before the first Shane Dawson series on Jeffree Star, so he was a very, very polarizing figure in the beauty space. It had been exposed that he had a very racist and problematic past, and a lot of people really did not like him for that, which personally I think was justified. I didn't like him. I think what Jeffree got from Manny was a better public reputation, because Manny at the time did have a relatively, while well, some people thought he was disingenuous, he had a decent public reputation. And I think that that is something that Jeffrey kind of needed. I do think that both people were mutually benefiting from that relationship in the same way that a lot of people who did collaborations with Jeffree Star, both benefiting him and also receiving benefits from being friends with him. I think that a lot of people who collaborated with him, like Nikki Tutorials, Nikita Dragon, Laura Lee, all the people we're going to talk about, I think that they gained numbers and gained a following. But I think that with their friendship, Jeffrey was able to sort of integrate into the beauty community in a way that he wouldn't have been without them. Now, as Manny and Jeffrey's friendship progressed, Jeffrey and Laura Lee also started becoming close friends and also started doing more video collaborations together. It kind of seems like Manny brought in Laura Lee and then Jeffrey had already had an existing relationship with Nikita Dragon and Nikita Dragon brought in Gabriel Zamora. So it was kind of like Jeffrey knew Manny and Nikita, they knew Laura and Gabriel, and then the five of them sort of became this squad of friends. Now, this was not a long period of time that this friendship lasted, but they posted about it enough and it lasted long enough that people got relatively invested in this friend group. I think the idea that all of these five top creators were like really, really close friends behind the scenes was really appealing to people. Because they did so many collaborations, they had a lot of shared fan base. And so their fans loved all of them and loved the idea of them hanging out all the time, going to movies together, doing video game nights. At this point in time, we had seen beauty guru friendships and things like that, but not anything that was quite this large, like not this many people with this many followers all being best friends. And on top of that, not only would they be doing like movie nights together, but they would be going on brand trips together because they all worked in the same industry. So every time there was like a trip in with Tarte or a benefit trip, they'd all take these gorgeous pictures together where their makeup salts on and they all look very glamorous. It was this very sort of idealized version of friendship that was definitely played up a lot for social media. Like, I don't think actually behind the scenes, all five of them, especially thinking about how each of their personalities kind of were, which was that they were all very sort of egocentric and very focused on their own careers. It's hard to believe there actually was a lot of genuine friendship happening there, but I think that it was incredibly mutually beneficial for all of them to be teaming up and working together. I think they all grew a lot from those friendships. And I also think they probably didn't mind each other. Like they liked each other enough to hang out and do things together. But at the time, I don't think that's what the perception was. I don't think at the time it was viewed as this like mutually beneficial powerhouse. It was viewed as all of these people genuinely being 
best friends. And I also think that the reaction to this friendship was a very mixed bag. As I said, Jeffree Star was incredibly polarizing. I think the fact that this group of influencers was so willing and open to be so openly friends with him when at the time, like I said, he'd been exposed for doing some really horrific stuff, even going as far to defend him on these actions. I think it caused a lot of problems because some fans loved it and they were like eating it up that they were all best friends. And other fans, I think, just felt incredibly disappointed by their endorsement of somebody who was seen as such a problematic person. Manny and Jeffrey were even so close that they launched a collaboration together with Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And on top of that, Laura Lee and Manny allegedly both got help from Jeffrey when they were trying to start their own makeup brands. That's something Jeffrey has said. I don't know if it's true, but it seems true. Like if you're friends with somebody who is growing a very successful brand, it makes sense that they would turn to him when they were trying to start their own brands. However, I think they late 2017, people were starting to realize that something was up. This group was like not posting together as much anymore. They weren't talking about each other as much anymore. There was definitely some sort of shady subtweeting happening. All five of them were sort of dominating in the beauty industry in their own ways. So it was really, really obvious and apparent when they stopped hanging out together and being so close. It wasn't like this was like a small group of influencers that like nobody really knew about. Like they had tens of millions of subscribers if you combined all of their subscriber base. Like people caught on and knew that something was up because they had made the relationship so public. Here's the interesting part about this whole thing is that through everything, like through everyone talking about this at length, through all the apology videos, through all the drama videos made, through everything, it is still largely unclear why all of them stopped being friends in the first place. Even Jeffrey, who is like known for just spilling all the tea always, has never fully talked about why those friendships fell apart. Manny's never talked about it, Laura's never talked about it, Nikita's never talked about it, Gabriel's never talked about it. Nobody's ever talked about what sort of the catalyst was that ended the friendship behind the scenes. And that's what I think is especially so interesting about all of this. Normally when we see friendships or relationships turn into drama, it's usually because we find out some sort of like behind the scenes tea about what happened, but that never happened in this instance. They just stopped being friends publicly and then people caught on to it and there was speculation, but like nobody really knew what happened. However, it became abundantly clear in April of 2018 that Manny, Laura, Gabriel, and Nikita had sort of dumped Jeffrey because in April of 2018, the four of them did this four-way collaboration where like they did Q and A's, they did Get Ready With Me's, they did Truth or Dare, they did all these fun videos videos and Jeffrey was like noticeably absent, which did cause a little bit of drama. I think it's kind of interesting because now in 2021, I cannot see anyone giving a singular fuck about that. <laughs> like I cannot see and so much has happened that are like, now it's like crimes that I can't see anybody even talking about four people like ditching one person. Like I can't even see that being news. But at the time it was kind of a big deal. Like it was a big deal that this very known group of friends had noticeably left Jeffrey out. I also think there was some shading in those four videos. I watched them back and they definitely were like a little shady, but nothing like crazy. We see friendships nowadays come and go in the beauty space that it really isn't that shocking when those things happen. But again, like I said at the time, we just hadn't seen anything like this before. And because they had made their friendships so public to the point of really profiting off of those friendships, I think that's why so many questions were being asked. So all of this sort of speculation and drama was happening around their friendship. And then in August 1st of 2018, Shane Dawson uploaded his first series with Jeffree Star titled The Secret World of Jeffree Star. And this first video especially has over 50 million views. So it did very well. I don't think I need to go through and talk about yet again how this series absolutely saved Jeffree Star's ass. Like there's no other way to put it other than Shane Dawson really revived his career and gave him a second chance. He was being seen in a whole new light than before. And the conversation shifted from, if you supported Jeffree Star on your channel, the comments were always filled with people being like, how can you support somebody like this? And then after the Shane Dawson series, if you didn't support his cosmetics, the question became, how can you not support Jeffree Star? Like that's the best way I can put the change. The shift was very drastic and very sudden and gave him an even stronger fan base than he had before, which is crazy because even before this Shane series, he had a very 
very strong and very aggressive fan base. Like they would go after people who they thought had wronged Jeffrey. Manny, Laura, Nikita, and Gabriel being some of those people. Like they already got a fair amount of criticism for leaving Jeffrey. So this got even more people on Jeffrey Star's side and his team. And the hate for people who spoke out against him got even bigger, giving Jeffrey Star sort of this power, I think, which is super interesting. Now I think what's really important to note before we sort of get into the picture and the way it was perceived and the way everything blew up after that, I think it's important to dispute this sort of narrative that happened during the first Dramageddon. There was this narrative that the picture that Gabriel Zamora posted, this picture, the picture that he posted and the caption that he posted was unprovoked. And so a lot of people saw it as bullying. A lot of people painted this as him bullying Jeffrey and putting Jeffrey down and all of those things. And while I don't really know how I feel about that, like I don't really agree that posting this picture was bullying, the narrative was that Gabriel Zamora had done this unprovoked, that there was no reason for him to do this, there was no reason for him to insert himself in this way, and that he was just doing it to be petty and mean. And personally, I disagree with that narrative heavily. Like, I don't think that's true. This picture was posted after a part of Shane's series where Jeffree Star talked about how toxic the beauty community was and also talked about how he had had friends who had dumped him in the beauty space and who had backstabbed him and who had used him. Now, Jeffree Star in this clip did not explicitly say that it was Gabriel Zamora or Manny or Laura or Nikita. He didn't say that. But the clip that was shown over him talking about that over people using him was a clip of him hanging out with Gabriel Zamora and Nikita Dragon. But Gabriel Zamora was in that doc in an overlay shot where Jeffree's talking about people who used him. I can imagine after this sort of redemption arc of Jeffree Star was happening, I can imagine that his former friends were getting a lot of shit. Were getting a lot of hate for not sticking by him, not staying his friend, even though we as the viewers had no context of why those friendships ended. Now, I remember pointing this out in 2018, and I think a lot of people blamed Shane for this. They said Jeffrey didn't do the editing, so there was no way that he could have known that's how Shane would twist the narrative, so Jeffrey didn't actually call them out. But I think what people don't remember is Jeffrey had full control over this narrative. Like, Shane sent him these series to watch. If he felt that that clip misrepresented his words, he had every opportunity to say so. And on top of that, Shane and Jeffrey were friends. So if Shane is putting in these clips of people who used Jeffree Star, chances are it's because Jeffree Star told him behind the scenes, oh, Gabriel and Nikita and Manny and Laura, they all used me. Like that's probably the narrative he was spinning behind the scenes. And like, maybe they did. Maybe that's true. I, we don't know. But to say that this photo that was posted was completely unprovoked and it was just them trying to bully him is like not the true tea. They definitely had a reason to be upset and I think they were probably getting a fair amount of hate as a result of this Shane doc. So on August 12, 2018, while the four of them were on a brand trip, they posted a picture together where they were all flipping off the camera with the caption, bitch is bitter because without him we're doing better. I can't even say that sentence without almost, it's not that I'm laughing because I think it's funny, it just is crazy how intense everything gets from this moment onward. Like it's absolutely crazy what unfolded as a result of one subtweet. Nowadays, I think this is what really just speaks to how bad the drama in the beauty community has gotten because nowadays a subtweet, that's not, nobody's gonna talk about that. Like. If this was tweeted now, nobody would talk about that. Nobody, I mean, I'm sure some channels would cover it, but like most people would just ignore that because there's like actual crimes happening. The fact that a subtweet is what started this chain of events that turned into all these top creators getting exposed is crazy. Now, many were very quick to jump on Gabriel for this post and sort of attack him for this post. And in turn, they attacked Manny and Nikita because they both had liked the photo, which people saw as an endorsement of bullying. And frankly, I think that this photo, the reason it got so much backlash at the time was because of when it was posted. Had they literally posted this like July 30th, did the day before the Shane Dawson series, had they posted it then, I don't think there would have been any backlash. People really, this just shows how drastic the shift was from people hating Jeffree Star to people being on his team. It was such a drastic shift 
shift. Like in the span of 12 days, it went from being a good thing to do to sort of disavow him to being a really, really bad thing to do that was going to get you in a lot of trouble. Because at the time that this photo was posted, 50 million people had just watched this life and story of Jeffree Star and had really began to sympathize with him. Now I do just want to jump ahead a little bit just to sort of provide a little bit of context because the next few details that I'm going to be talking about, they're all pulled from Gabriel Zamora's My Truth video, um, which we're going to get into a little bit later on in the series. But if the reason that a lot of this seems more skewed towards maybe Gabriel's perspective, it's because he is the one that sort of gave a behind the scenes look and narrative about what happened after after this photo was posted. And nobody has really contested this story. None of the three other people that were involved have ever come out and been like, no, he's lying. So based on everything that we know as like the viewer, this is sort of what happened. And the reason I kind of want to bring it up and talk about things from his perspective is because I think it shows a really interesting behind the scenes look at where the four people involved at the center of this scandal, kind of where their mindsets were. Because I think they all sort of had somewhat different mindsets. And I think they also handled things very differently, which I think was interesting. So Gabriel posted this photo before he went to bed and when he woke up there was a ton of hate and everyone was blowing up at him and it was getting kind of big because people knew that he was talking about Jeffree Star. That is when Gabriel woke up and tweeted imagine standing a racist I could never and then he basically went about his day on the brand trip. I mean he says Nikita called him to let him know that this was blowing up um, and then the four of them all went because they were on a brand trip all of them went to this pool party and that is when they found out that old tweets from particularly Gabriel, Laura, and Nikita were being brought up again. There were old tweets of Laura and Gabriel saying the n-word and there were also old tweets of Nikita being brought up where she had made incredibly inappropriate statements. There was also things being brought up from Manny's past. There was an instance where he was in a car with an Uber driver and he said something that was discriminatory about the person not being able to speak English. There was an issue where he was reading with a fan with Jeffrey actually and it looked like he was laughing and mocking a fan. So all of this old stuff for all four of these people started being resurfaced. And the reason for that was because people were upset with them for posting this photo. So people went searching, they went digging for these old tweets, they went digging for this problematic behavior that they had displayed in the past. Gabriel said that when these tweets started coming to light, he was actually with Laura as she was finding out that people were finding all of these old tweets. Laura later went on private on Twitter, which personally I think was a very bad move on her part. I think her mindset was she was going to go through and delete all of the tweets. What this actually led to was there was a lot of screenshots that nobody could confirm if they were real or not. So people just assumed they were real. The screenshots of her being incredibly racist and because nobody had access to her Twitter to confirm or deny this, a lot of people just assumed they were real. He said as the tweets started coming in, he decided to delete the original photo for Laura's sake because she was getting pulled into this and getting a lot of heat on her and he did feel like it was unfair because even though she maybe talked about Jeffrey behind the scenes, she was not the one who consented to have this photo posted with that message on it. Like Gabriel just kind of did this on his own. He said as the days continued on, uh, the four of them obviously left the brand trip and on the way home, Manny especially started leading this sort of PR move, like how to get out of this in a very PR our way. Manny and I think in turn Laura and Nikita sort of wanted Gabriel to fall on the sword for them, like wanted him to take all of the heat and the sort of brunt of what was going on, which I think is just interesting because at that point that wasn't going to happen. Like if all that had happened was this sort of shady photo and people were accusing them of bullying, that might have worked. However, now that racist and problematic stuff was coming out about all of them, I don't understand why they thought Gabriel would be the one to like take the fall for this. But anyway, he basically wanted Gabriel to put out this sort of notes app apology and then they were going to put out their apologies and they were trying to sort of coordinate and strategize how they were going to get out of this. And I think what this really shows and what's so interesting is that because this was the first time something like this had ever really happened, like there was sort of a group cancellation happening, it's interesting to see how they were trying to strategize and how they were trying to go about things. Because the normal standard way that beauty gurus used to apologize 
be like a notes app apology and like that was good enough so i think in their brains like they thought oh well that's what everyone else does so that will be good enough for us too but i think what they weren't realizing because it was an unprecedented time was that that wasn't going to be good enough anymore there was too much happening and too much coming out and too many big big players involved for them to even really be able to do anything that previous people had done when they had been called out for things now gabriel also talked about how he felt really bad about this because he felt like his friends were trying to throw him under the bus he felt like they were backpedaling on liking the tweets because manny publicly responded to him being like thank you for deleting that photo and tried to backpedal and say that he didn't actually know what he was liking when he liked it and gabriel also felt like his friends were sort of being fake because the things that he had tweeted publicly while he did it publicly yes they all believed and agreed with privately so he felt like it wasn't fair that they were trying to make it seem like he was the only one who held this opinion when they all did and while i understand that perspective and i don't necessarily disagree with that i do think that more accountability should have been put on him and he should have maybe put more accountability on himself for posting that in the first place because there's a very large difference between you and your friends like talking shit about somebody else and you going on and like posting that like imagine if you it's basically like talking about your co-workers like if you entrusted a co-worker and talked to them about some stuff that went down and you talked drama or were bad talking one of your co-workers and then the co-worker you confided in turned around and like posted it on the company facebook page like you'd be pretty pissed at that person so i don't know i get both sides i get that like he didn't want to feel like he was falling on the sword when it was something they all believed but i also couldn't understand the frustration from the other three people involved who felt like their private conversations were being like blasted publicly now once all four of them got back from this brand trip gabriel released a notes app apology this was really heavily heavily criticized laura lee made a video that has honestly become famous for being one of the most disliked videos on youtube where she basically sat down and was just crying i think everybody even if you don't even know the context of dramageddon i think a lot of people know this apology that video got so many views and was so roasted from everyone like even people i think pewdiepie reacted to that video and he is the biggest content creator on the platform there are so many people who were outside of the realm of beauty and drama who started covering this story and the main reason for that was because of laura lee's video that video just turned into such a meme and blew up to this huge thing because it was just her just crying and basically playing the victim manny put out a video where he apologized to the fan that thought he was making fun of her and kind of talked about all of that but people didn't like that apology because it felt like he was missing the point of like the bigger issues that people had with him and his behavior nikita posted just a snapchat story i think nikita honestly and i said this at the time too i think out of everyone nikita and i do not like nikita now at all and i think that she has done some very very horrible and problematic stuff since all this happened but i think at the time the tweets that people were pulling from that were were bad from her was when she was like 15 years old. So a lot of people felt like Nikita Dragon didn't really get any ramifications or repercussions from her actions during this whole thing. They felt like everybody else got something bad happened to them, but Nikita kind of got out of it unscathed. And while I think that's true, I think there's a difference between somebody tweeting something like that at age 15 and somebody tweeting something like what Laura Lee tweeted when she was like 22 years old. Like that age difference is huge. The maturity level is huge. And honestly, it's not that I think it was okay that Nikita did that. I just also think the reason that she got got away with it was because of her age and how young she was when everything happened. I also think her response being just like a Snapchat story honestly speaks to this idea that a lot of YouTubers have rallied around since this all happened that if you just ignore things it will go away and that's something a lot of YouTubers do now and I think the fact that Nikita didn't really face any sort of punishment for all of this because she just didn't really say anything whereas laura lee is like really never recovered i think shows that that theory of just staying silent has some truth to it also on jeffrey's end he was just kind of staying silent but he did post a snapchat story where he was just like maniacally laughing in his mansion <sighs> So there was that. And then after all of this had happened and everything had sort of blown up to a huge point where like media outlets were covering it, they were all hemorrhaging subscribers, Gabriel Zamora put out the My Truth 
video. This video, and I, I say this strongly, changed the way that beauty YouTubers would apologize going forward. Like this video had a ripple effect through the YouTube beauty community and it changed the YouTuber apology as we know it. Like I said before this, a lot of YouTubers, they didn't really get on camera, or if they did, it was a very scripted apology. It often seemed very like disingenuous. Like we had never seen a 45 minute, completely uncut, no edits, just somebody genuinely seeming like they're just speaking to you about a mistake they've made. It was either a notes app apology or a scripted apology that was obviously made by a PR team before this. We had never seen what Gabriel did before, which was just sit down and tell his truth. And this apology, and I don't even wanna call it just an apology, because it was an apology and then also sort of pulling back the curtain on the beauty community and the people that he had been friends with, which was particularly Manny MUA. It painted Manny as a really, really bad friend and a social climber. And it was so well received because people felt like he didn't make excuses for the old tweets. He provided resources and links on like why what he said was wrong. And he also talked about how betrayed he felt by his friend and the conversation very very quickly shifted to Manny MUA being this kind of horrible social climbing snake. And I think the reason a lot of people were so quick to believe that, because it's not that I don't believe Gabriel, Manny and Laura too have admitted that they were way too hyper-focused on like growing and becoming these massive YouTubers and just got way too caught up in social media and the sort of toxicity of being number one and being the best, that they let it cloud their judgment and character, which led to them making these really questionable decisions of putting their careers before people that they had called their best friends. It seemed like instead of wanting them all to band together, they just wanted Gabriel to take all of the blame. And I think that that was a very large issue for Gabriel, and that's why I think he spoke out in the way that he did. After this My Truth video, like I said, everything blew up. There was hundreds of videos and content made about all of this. Like this was huge. I remember I had like 4,000 subscribers at the time and Dramageddon 1 pushed me over to like 7,000 subscribers because I was talking about it. Everyone was talking about it. It was like the craziest thing we had seen. We'd never seen anything like this before and that's where the term Dramageddon came from. It was just insanity, like one thing after the next. Laura Lee and Manny MUA were both over 5 million subscribers and they both went below 5 million subscribers. Laura lost like 300,000 subscribers in a week. She lost her discount code with Morphe brushes, which I am sure cost her millions of dollars. She also was supposed to have her new brand, Laura Lee Los Angeles, featured in Ulta Beauty stores, and they immediately dropped her after these tweets came out. And honestly, in recent years, a lot of people have said that the treatment that Laura got for those tweets wasn't fair and that she was too harshly punished. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think she said racist things and she needed to face ramifications for that. But on the flip side of it, I think the reason it feels unfair to her is because we have seen a lot of creators do so much worse and be so much more blatantly racist and so much more horrible and do all these horrific things and we see nothing happen to them. So I think the only reason that what happened to Laura seems so extreme and seems so crazy is because not a lot of people are ever held to that same standard even when they do things that are arguably like way worse or way more a pattern of behavior than what happened with Laura. I think those consequences were appropriate. I just wish that it was consistent across all people who did things like that. Manny also lost over 250,000 subscribers in like the span of a week, uh, especially after Gabriel's video, he really started to go down and Gabriel's subscriber count really started to go up. His video, My Truth, got millions of views. The majority of people were completely on his side. Also in that video, Gabriel apologized to Jeffree Star, aligned himself with Jeffree Star, and basically said that he was wrong for what he had thought about him and that Manny and Laura had told him things about Jeffree and he just had believed it and that that wasn't fair to him. Him. So Gabriel really aligned himself with a person who was now starting to become sort of the face of the beauty community. He was becoming increasingly popular. And honestly, nothing really happened to Nikita. She just kept doing her thing. Now Manny put out another video after Gabriel's where he apologized to Jeffrey, he apologized to Gabriel, um, and he basically said that he was going to be taking an extended break. And Laura Lee also took an extended break from the internet. After about a month or so, Manny and Laura did come back to YouTube. Manny tried to do this sort of like docu-series on his life and what led him to being canceled, but it was pretty much 
cut off after the first episode that he aired because people accused him of just trying to copy Shane Dawson, which is kind of dumb, but I get why people didn't want to hear it from him. I think people were just kind of over it at that point. I think not enough time had passed where people were open and willing to hear his side, if that makes sense. And Laura also came out with a video after she deleted her first one of her crying, where she basically apologized and said that she screwed up with her initial video. Again, I think it was just too soon. It was only like a month after that video. So I think people found it hard to believe that she had genuinely made this like massive change in the span of one month um, from her initial gut reaction. Now, in the years since this first Dramageddon, there have been multiple Dramageddon type scandals that have all seemed bigger and more gross and disgusting. However, if we're talking about the OG people involved in the very first Dramageddon, Nikita didn't face a lot of backlash, but in years since has been continually called out for racist and problematic behavior. And she was also a part of Dramageddon 2 or Sister Geddon, the James Charles scandal. She's been involved in a bunch of those because she continually defends and sticks up for James Charles. Nikita and Gabriel also, for a short period of time, it seems like they were friends with Jeffree Star. I remember they posted a photo of the three of them together and everyone was like freaking out because like it seemed like they were all friends again. Seems like that was pretty short lived, but uh, Gabriel Zamora grew his channel a lot from all of that um, and got a lot of recognition in the beauty community as a result of being involved in this. And he was also involved in other Dramageddons. I mean, he stood up for James. He stood up for James really recently in regards to the Predator scandal. And he was actually a catalyst for the Dramageddon 2 because he called out Tati and said that she should make a video calling James out. And so she did. She literally included his clip in her video and called to him as being the one who sort of instigated all of this. Gabriel and Nikita are also still friends with Manny and Laura, but Manny and Laura, I think, had a really interesting kind of turn of events. They were definitely the two that lost the most from this Dramageddon. And if you look at their channel analytics, they really have not been able to bounce back in the same way that they once did. Like they both lost all those subscribers and they really have not gained them back. They still get pretty decent views, but nowhere near what they were getting back in 2018. However, honestly, they are two people who experienced this and went through this and seem to have kind of learned from it actually. Like both of them can't remember the last time either of them have really been in any sort of controversy. I know Manny has gotten a few things on Twitter where he's like said some stuff and I think Laura has too, but for the most part, you don't see their names in drama channel titles anymore. You don't hear a lot about them unless it's from their brands launching. Or for example, Laura adopted her niece, Erin, and has done a lot of talking on her channel about how addiction can impact family members, which I think is a wonderful use of her platform and being very open and honest about her own life to potentially help other people. She's still been launching her cosmetics brand, Laura Lee Los Angeles. And while it's not been like the most successful brand, it seems to do pretty well for her. And she also just launched a clothing line, Nudie, I think it's called Nudie Patootie. She's really just kept her head down and stayed out of drama. And honestly, so has Manny. He stayed out of the drama. It seems like he actually put a lot of time and effort into focusing on himself behind the scenes and not just as Manny MUA. And I think what's really interesting is the two of them have actually stayed really, really good friends. Like, you know, Gabriel and Nikita aren't really friends anymore. And Jeffrey isn't friends with any of them. And like all of this sort of drama, but it really does seem like Manny and Laura have stuck it out and they just are friends. They post collabs from time to time. They're on TikTok together all the time, but they just sort of do them now and they don't really get involved in any of the sort of problematic stuff that happens in the beauty space anymore. And Manny has been really successful with Lunar Beauty. I mean, he has a lot of launches that sell out. They were at Sephora for a while. He gets a good amount of buzz on social media. Like I think both of them, even though if you look at the statistics and the analytics, they definitely did not bounce back in the same way that Gabriel and Dakita and Jeffrey and everybody else did. They also seem like they're the most happy in their lives. Like they seem like they're both just living their lives, doing what they're doing, just trying to keep themselves out of drama. And I respect that. Like I respect people who can learn and grow from situations and really try hard to not get into them again. I think their track record of staying out of drama going forward really does speak for itself, honestly, especially when pretty much everyone else involved was a catalyst in like the even bigger dramas that ended up happening. So it's like you had some people that really learned and took away from it and you have other people people who, you know, I don't think they're bad people. I just think they didn't really learn from those situations in the same way that Manny and Laura did. And I think that's because Manny and Laura actually had to face consequences for their actions. Like they really did. They had to face those consequences. There was no way around it. I do just want to end this by saying, I think the most interesting part about Dramageddon 1 is that if this had never happened, I do not think that Sister Geddon or Dramageddon 2 or Dramageddon 4 or however many were on at this point, I don't think any of those things would have ever happened. I think that Dramageddon 1 
gave Jeffree Star a level of power and credibility that he did not have before. After all of this happened, Jeffree Star was literally known as like the career ruiner. And he wore that like a badge of honor. And honestly, I think that's super telling. If you look at all of the dramas starting at Dramageddon 1 to now from the past three years, Jeffree Star plays a role in all of them. And I think that the sort of inflated ego that both the Shane series and the successful victory of this first Dramageddon gave him, gave him this sort of power and he ended up just using it for evil and turned the beauty community into a really toxic place for everyone involved. But anyway, <laughs> We can talk about the other Dramageddons later if you guys are interested and recap on those, but that was Dramageddon 1. Um, I'm super interested to hear what you guys have to say about this, what you remember from that time, like if your perspective about any of it has changed given hindsight. I'm just very curious what you all think about it now, because my opinions have changed drastically from when all this first started. Like I feel like my opinions evolved so much. Even researching everything that happened, I feel like my opinions evolved so much. So I think that's really interesting, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this. I'm super interested to hear. Uh, I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with my social justice spotlight. You can go check that out. Uh, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.